All right, it looks like it is officially 1025. So for those of you who are just joining us, welcome. Um, the sketch code is on the screen. If you could go ahead and record that for your beginning code, there'll be another code at the end um, that we'll put up at the end of our session. We are excited and honored that you all are here for today's session. We know that um, it's hard to be present in a conference in the summertime, especially when uh, it's, at least by me, I'm in, in Howell, it's, it's sunny out right now. So it makes you wanna you know, be focused elsewhere, but we know the importance of the topic that um, Heather and Sherry are gonna be presenting on. And so I'm sure that that's what, part of what draw, drew you all into our session today. Um, so my name is Melissa Nantes. I'm just going to do a quick introduction of our two presenters, and then I'm going to turn the stage over to those two lovely ladies. So um, our first presenter is uh, Sherry uh, Strathen. Sherry is currently the supervisor of the Department of Behavior Supports at Port Huron Area School District. Um, prior to that, she was a, worked as a social worker and the behavior interventionist and coach in Port Huron Schools. So she is um, been knee deep in the, feet, the thick of doing this implementation work. And her uh, colleague and co-presenter is Heather Burkholtz. And Heather is currently a positive behavior interventionist and coach also in Port Huron Area Schools, supporting the STEAM Academy at Wood Woodrow Wilson and the Literacy Academy at Cleveland Elementary. And I know you all will um, join me in giving them a virtual warm welcome for our session today. So thank you, ladies. Thank you. We're so happy to be here. Thank you for that introduction, Melissa. Well, we're really pleased to be representing Port Huron Area School District today and two of our elementary schools, Woodrow Wilson STEAM Academy and Cleveland uh, Elementary Literacy Academy. Woodrow Wilson is a 3-5 uh, student school and Cleveland Elementary is a K-2 school. And we're here to talk to you about our story, about how we created our tier two attendance intervention and how we infused attendance groups within that intervention. Melissa is going to, Melissa and Heather, they are going to be in the chat box this morning. I am uh, advancing the slides on the slideshow. So they will be stopping uh, throughout the time if you have questions please feel free to enter it into the chat box and they will be stopping me along the way and we'll be answering questions as we go. That will be the way that we're interacting this morning. Here's our agenda for this morning. We will be starting with a three question poll and I am starting the first half of the presentation with a walkthrough of our tier two attendance intervention startup. When we started this intervention at Woodrow Wilson uh, STEAM Academy, I was the behavior interventionist coach at that time. So I have the background and the knowledge about how we started this intervention. So I'll be sharing that with you. And then we'll take a couple minute break and then Heather will come and talk you through a walkthrough of our tier two attendance intervention as it stands now and her journey with continuing this intervention at both schools, at Woodrow Wilson and at, at um, Cleveland Elementary during um, hybrid and virtual. And she has lots of videos and lots of pictures and information to share with you through her journey in that respect. So we'll start with our, our poll. The poll is located underneath the, the box where the pictures are. You just need to scroll down underneath the box there there are three questions. The first question is, do you work at the elementary or secondary level? The second question is, are you a teacher, a social worker, a counselor, administrator, or other professional? And the third question is, do, does your school offer tier two attendance support? Uh, because we aren't in, able to interact in person, we'd like to know who you are and who our audience is so we can reflect upon that as we go forward. So um, go ahead and answer those questions within the poll. And I will let uh, Melissa or Heather just give us a, an overview of how that poll looks once everyone has entered.
want to say like the horse races, you know, 53% for secondary and 47% for elementary closing in on each other. But we are about split 50 50 as of right now, a little less mm -hmm. um, elementary and secondary. Okay. Um, about a third of our audience, a little less than a third of the audience is administrator. Uh, we've got a nice chunk, 29% that identified others. So if you guys want to go ahead and uh, toss your role into the chat box, that would help us. And looks like for the third question, um, tier two attendance group, 48% at secondary said no. Um, they don't have that. And uh, 20, about 25% at elementary said no. So small group about altogether a little over, a little less than 30% of people do have some kind of tier two attendance group, but the majority of folks don't. Okay, great. Thank you. Thank you for answering those questions. Um, it's good for us to know as we move on. And we also can reflect, even though we are talking about this intervention that we created from an elementary point of view, this is also a system that definitely can be adapted for secondary. So we're glad that our secondary folks are with us today too. So I'd like to start our story with the compelling why. Why did we feel that we needed this tier two attendance intervention process at our school? At that time in January of 2019, we had uh, been, we were in our third year of our PBIS implementation. And we had, um, so we had check in, check out on our intervention grid. We had tier two social skills groups and we were also using the superintendent dropout challenge as a tier two intervention. At that time, we did not have a tier two intervention that addressed attendance. I was the behavior interventionist at that time, and I was facilitating our tier two social skills group. And I noticed that many times students were absent from this group. Uh, we weren't able to meet the goals for some of our students because they just were not there. Also, I noted when the students were there, they were not making any growth behaviorally because they had not been in school. So I started to think about that and thought if the students are absent within my group and within the situation, I felt like I wanted to look further into that and what might be um, happening for these students. So I dug deeper into the data of the students who had the high absenteeism. I looked further at academic, their progress academically, their progress behaviorally, and I really did not find a pattern. What I found was that these students were absent. Um, some of the students who had high absenteeism happened to do well academically, happened to do well behaviorally. And then I found some students were not. Secondly, I felt it was important to check to see what interventions had already been tried. Who had done what already within our system at our school um, to encourage these students and to encourage the parents to get the students to school. There were three people that I talked to. I definitely had talked to the teachers and the teachers had shared that they were uh, implementing tier one strategies, calling home, talking to the student, texting parents, emailing parents, sending letters home, those tier one strategies that you would typically uh, use as a teacher. Secondly, I talked with the school principal and we knew through our PBIS tier one team that we were implementing tier one strategies school-wide for good attendance. We were providing classrooms with pizza parties, individual student recognition at assemblies, some rewards to families who were getting their students to school on a regular basis. The principal also was talking with the parent, was talking with the students, sometimes talked with the siblings of the students, to try to get them to come to school. And the progress that we were looking for was just not there for as many students as we wanted. Thirdly, we had a staff on um, within our school who was based in our school, who is a DHHS caseworker. And she also works for Pathways to Potential. 
So part of her job within the Pathways to Potential system is to encourage attendance for students, to help families break down barriers so students will more often come to school. And she was working with the principal side by side on a lot of those tier one strategies. Uh, in addition to that, she was helping families with trying to find uh, transportation, perhaps childcare, some of those other necessary um, items for families to function well. She was trying to provide those for those families. After speaking with the three staff that I've already mentioned, they agreed also that we would like to see our attendance patterns increase, that we would like to have more students attending school on a regular basis. And um, so we, we thought a little bit more about that. And we decided that we really did have the data for a tier two intervention. But the question was, what would we do? What would this intervention look like? We knew that just asking parents to get kids to school wasn't always helpful because there were lots of other things going on that were preventing parents and students from getting to school on a regular basis. For me as a behavior interventionist within the school, I felt it was really important that whatever intervention we implemented, it needed to be something that was familiar to our staff. We didn't want to say we have a new program, we have a new intervention, let's try all these new things. I really wanted to avoid reinventing the wheel because historically we know if we give our staff too much to do, we give ourselves too much to do, we may not implement fully and those interventions may go to the side. So for us, the answer to this was to use the, our PBIS system, the facets of our system that we had already been using. Our teachers were very well versed with tier one strategies, very well versed with using the matrix as a, as a baseline for uh, teaching students behavior, correct behaviors. The teachers were very comfortable with using acknowledgement tickets and rewarding and supporting students. So in looking at a tier two intervention for attendance, I was trying to think how can we use all these strategies that we already know and build it into a system that might be helpful to getting our students to school? How can we get more student buy-in and empower our students? So thinking forward with this and moving forward, um, I felt it was really important for us to continue to follow these two beliefs when it comes to PBIS, that behavior can be changed and we need to only control the controllables. In thinking about the fact that we believe that behavior can be changed. We saw at the tier one level that not all students were making progress that we had hoped. And so I felt it was important that as we moved forward that we still say behavior can be changed. We can do this. We can support our students. We've tried A, B, and C, but we're going to put in more supports and change what we're doing from an adult standpoint so we can help our students change behavior. Secondly, really important is the fact that we need to remember that we can only control the controllables. We can ask uh, our parents, we can ask our students to come to school. We can't make anybody do anything, but we can provide the supports within the school to empower, to encourage, to perhaps break some, down some barriers for our students and our families. And that thinking of those two beliefs were really important is we continue to move forward and build the system. I also felt again, it was really important that we follow the big ideas of school-wide PBIS, that within this attendance intervention, we would be defining the attendance expectations for our students, that we would teaching, be teaching our students about um, and empower them about how to get to school and to problem solve, what can they do differently to make sure that they can get to school on a regular basis. The system or the intervention that we put in place, we need to remember that we are going to monitor that. We are going to look at their attendance, see what the progress is within, within time, to acknowledge and encourage the students, to acknowledge them when they are at school, to acknowledge them when they're doing the right thing and continue to encourage them 
to teach and reteach, and then continue to uh, keep the data, provide the data for decision making and moving forward. Also, I felt it was important to possibly take a different approach in, in working with our students and families, a more stronger approach about seeking first to understand why are students absent. Again, we can ask parents, we can ask students to come to school, but that just isn't enough. Uncovering what motivates our students to attend to school when they are present, uncovering what is happening when they're absent? What is the barrier and how can we help them? Seems to be an approach that we might want to take to again, break down some barriers and to help students uh, on the path of being empowered and perhaps even getting to school on their own if they don't have that support. We knew from our CHAMPS training also, and of course the works of many behaviorists, the importance of building relationships. And I felt it was really important that we infuse some of this into the system that we were creating. Uh, our CHAMPS training tells us and teaches us that um, students will work harder for students or for uh, teachers and staff who they have a relationship with and that their achievement level improves and that um, when a student has a relationship with a significant person in the school, they will try to please them. They don't want to disappoint them. So we wondered how would building relationships within this intervention, within um, the tier two attendance intervention, how would that be helpful to the process as we move forward? So where to begin? Anytime you're building a system it, uh, it takes time, it takes intention, but we also know that when you put the work in at the front, when you front load at the end, you're going to spend less time and see more progress. So we had to begin somewhere. So I did collaborate with the school principal and shared with him some of my thoughts and asked if he would be okay with us starting a small pilot attendance intervention process and the group setting. And he, uh, he was agreeable with that. So I put together a format, which I presented to him. And I also knew that I needed to invite another staff member to partner with me in this endeavor, because we needed an extra staff member who was going to be able to facilitate the intervention on a daily basis. And we, again, were lucky enough to have a DHHS caseworker who was placed within our school and she worked through Pathways for Potential. And she also had an interest in our student body for students to be attending school timely and on a regular basis. So I asked her if she would be part of this pilot program and she agreed. So we went to work and got started. As we, we finally made some final touches on the intervention, we considered some of the evidence-based practices that we already knew about. Uh, our staff knew well about check-in, check-out, that morning and afternoon check-in, check-out. Our students were well-versed about that, and we knew the benefits of it. We had seen students who had made great progress on check-in, check-out in a short amount of time. So we wondered how could we utilize a check-in, check-out system within this intervention. We also knew the power of greeting students at the door in the morning, that there's benefits to that. When a student greets, when a teacher greets a student in the beginning of the day, they get a read on how that student's morning was, is that student prepared for school? Um, the teacher learns lots of things about students when they're able to greet them at the door. And we do see evidence that students start off their day better in a more positive way if they are greeted at the door. We thought about that the ratios of interaction and that three to one and paying attention to behaviors that we want to see for students. How could we infuse this uh, evidence-based practice within this intervention? And then we also thought about the, the merit of 
organizing students in the beginning of the day and addressing their their needs right off right in the beginning of the day right before they start so this is an outline of our initial process and i'm going to this is a slide that just uh, has laid this all out and then i'm going to go uh, slide by slide to be more specific about each portion of this we decided to identify a small number of students. We identified seven students, and we were in agreement that this was going to be a pilot, that some things were not going to go right, some students will make progress, some wouldn't, that as we went along the way, that we would have to change things, and that this was probably a continuous cycle of improvement, that we would always be working to make changes and to better this program. So we identified seven students and we decided that based on our, uh, our um, experience with check-in, check-out, that we would start with just a check-in upon entry to school. And this is where elementary might look or secondary might look different than elementary. For our elementary students, we had data that told us when a student came to school in the morning, they stayed all day long. They didn't leave. Typically, they were there for the day. Secondary is a little different. Secondary students, uh, especially high school students, might come up missing midday or may leave early. So if you are working this intervention within the secondary system, <clears throat> you may just want to have a check-in and a check-out. Or you may want to have a check-in two times a day, morning and noon or three times a day. You would have to determine <clears throat> what you would be comfortable with, but that's an idea for the secondary system. We knew through our PBIS system about providing acknowledgement tickets for students and so they could earn a reward. So we thought we would uh, acknowledge students for being on time and present as a group. So we had a bucket of tickets and those students as a group, our seven students could put tickets into this bucket and collaboratively earn a group reward for all being there. And this really changed some of the interactions that we saw with students. We saw students really encouraging each other to come to school, giving each other advice. That group reward really was really interesting to see how the students came together in that process. We also wanted to acknowledge a student individually for coming to school and for making it to their classroom after they checked in, that we had students who um, would check in with us, but not make it up into the classroom. So we'll talk about that in a little bit too, how we address that. So we looked at acknowledging our students, and then we had weekly meetings with myself, the behavior interventionist, and our DHHS caseworker, our P2P worker, and we facilitated community circles, and we also incorporated a visit uh, with our therapy dogs. And then lastly, of course, we were collecting data on what progress students were making and where we were going and moving forward. Okay, so this is the morning check-in procedure that we started with. We front loaded the students, we told them what the procedure would look like uh, and what their expectations were. So we met with the students and actually prior to that, we did make the phone call home to the parents to say, you know, we have this great opportunity for your student and for you. We have this intervention we want to support them with and we had 100% participation from the parents. The parents were all, were all in and wanted this to happen. So we, we taught the students to go to room 200 when they arrived at school. They weren't to go anywhere else. They were just to go right, right to room 200. At the door, um, our, our DHHS caseworker greeted them every morning. She was standing outside the door. She talked to them about uh, how great it was that they were on time. She talked to them about um, coming in and, and documenting that they were there. Um, it was a real, it was a real scene. Um, she did the happy dance. The kids were all excited. There was a lot of laughing and happiness when they were greeted at the door. When they entered the room, 
we provided a calendar for each student and they checked in using a, a sticker system. So the calendars, we just printed off from precalendar.com um, and I had every sticker that I had owned in my life, brought it to the, um, to the room that we were meeting with the student, gave each student a calendar and we marked off weekends and holidays, uh, snow days at the time, conferences, whatever was happening. So the student could see on the calendar exactly how many days there were in a month. And we asked them to take the sticker and put that on the calendar. And if you know elementary kids, you know they love stickers, any kind of sticker. So they would put the sticker on the calendar when they were on time and present. We talked to them about preparation for the day. Were they prepared for the day? Did they have what they needed? Again, at that point, we gave them an acknowledgement ticket for being on time and present for that group reward. And then what our DHHS worker found was that we needed to have an additional pass to class. What was happening was our students were coming for the most part on time and checking in with us, but something happened between the time they were with us and got to class, they were found to be late. So that's where the pass came in. And when they got to their classroom, that's when the teacher gave them an individual acknowledgement ticket for them to use towards their own individual reward. So again, the check-in included greeting at the door, uh, the happy dance, the hurrah, that we're so glad that you're there giving those positive ratios of interaction, and then checking to make sure that the students were ready for school. Um, not, over, not even, not only for academics, but also uh, did they have um, permission slips for field trips? Did they have you know, those individual um, pieces of information they needed for the teacher that day? And if they didn't, we helped them with that before they left the room and went, went to their classroom. Thank you, Sherry. Yes, we do have a quick question. Okay. Um, I have Heather asking, how did you pick the seven pilot students? That's a good question. Um, we went through the, the attendance data. So I looked at the students who were missing 15% or more of school days and took a look at what interventions were currently happening. So some of the students um, had, were in the middle of moving. Um, they were in the middle of leaving our school. Some students uh, had already been referred to our, our truancy program and they already had a lot of initial supports going on. So we went down the list and just based on what we knew about the attendance pattern and what was happening with attendance for those students, we just made a decision uh, to pick those first seven students that didn't have as many supports as other students. We didn't really know what to do. <laughs> we, we were just trying to start the program. So that that's really how we did it. We went through, knew the students who already had those high supports and some who didn't and started with those, that seven. That's a good question. So this slide here is a picture of our check-in room. It was a full classroom and you can see on the table there, um, on the left-hand side, there are some green passes and those are the passes that the students used uh, to take from the classroom check-in to their uh, teacher's room. You see the little girl putting her hand in the bucket. She's putting her acknowledgement ticket in the little bucket. And then you can see all the stickers laying on the table there ready for students to pick and put on their calendars. We placed the calendars on the front of the board in no particular order. May have been grade at this, at this time, I can't really remember, but the students, their attendance calendar was po were posted and that's where they, when they place the stickers on the calendar. What was interesting is even though there's only one student in, in this picture, most often all seven of the students were there together 
and they would start to talk to each other about their attendance pattern. And you often would see them talking about how they had made progress, that this week they had been to school more days than last week. And you heard students talking to each other about why, why weren't you here at school last week? What happened? Um, talking to each other and then, of course, praising each other when they saw that they were making, they were making process, progress. It was really nice to see. And that, that was something that developed that we didn't think about when we started this. One more quick question sure. before you move ahead. Jennifer wants to know, how long were you with them for check-in? Like how long did that initial process of students checking and take? Right. Initially, we were with them for a long time because we didn't know that we needed to be careful of our time. <laughs> and what happened was then students were getting to school late and we realized that our conversations with them were too long and too involved. So we had to change that. We, it, it was just a matter of minutes. And what happened was the students knew what the procedure is once we got started. They knew to be at that room if they wanted to spend a little bit more time, they had to get to that room early because we still expected them to be on time when they got to their classroom. So it, it almost, it evolves that they came in and just kind of clicked along. They walked in, they did the happy dance, they got their sticker, they got their acknowledgement ticket, and if everything was great, they went on their way. Sometimes we did have students who came in and needed a little bit more TLC. There had been incidents in the morning or needed some, some kind of support. And in that regards, we spent a few more minutes, but just minutes. We expected them to get to their class as soon as possible. Why did we use a calendar? This was interesting for me to see with students within my practice individually with uh, tier two uh, social skills group, I used a calendar as a check-in so students knew how often they were in attendance for that group. And I noticed that students really liked that. It was a segue from coming into the room and getting started. And I noticed that they were keeping track of their own attendance through this calendar. I also learned that students had tended to have elementary students a poor perception of time. It was really interesting for me to hear them talk about their calendars because some of them did not truly realize how often they were absent from school until they could see that visual, until they saw that there were, there were stickers on the calendar and then there were stickers that were missing and students would actually say, well, wait, I wasn't absent that much last week. And we would say, you were. We have five days in the school in a, in a school week, or absent two days, let's talk about that. The calendar and those stickers provided motivation because the kids wanted the sticker and they knew in order to get the sticker, they needed to be there present and on time. So it just provided its own motivation. I already referenced that this was just a, a you saw on the slide before, a calendar printout off, off of the internet. Um, the calendar is easy for students to understand. They saw the visual. They started to understand about how many days there were in a week that they needed to attend, and it became more clear for them. We did not provide a sticker if the students were late or absent, and this was really a heartbreaker for us because we knew that it was not always the students' responsibility if they were late. However, we knew if we gave them the sticker and they weren't on time, that would start to continue and our purpose would not be there anymore. So when a sticker wasn't given, we had a conversation with the student. We talked about what we could do differently. How could we support them? It was always a, a positive. We're going to earn one tomorrow. These are the things that we're going to do. But we did hold true to that rule that it was important for us that the student did not have that sticker if they were late or absent. So here is a picture of a calendar from February to March. We started this intervention at the end of January of 2019. So it was about the 28th, it was semester. You can see the student uh, his calendar from February to March. 
he was absent one time a week in that February calendar. And you see on the right in March, he was, he had a perfect attendance. There is one box there without a sticker, but he did forgot to check in that day, but he was present. So he went from uh, an absent one time a week to perfect attendance within one month. Here's a close up of one of the calendars. You can see the, the stickers on the right hand side of the slide. This is a visual of the pass that we provided to students. Called it a check in pass. They were here today and they earned a reward ticket when they got to school. We also circled if they were on time for school or not. So the teacher understood because often students, even if they were late to school, they still checked in. Even if they came an hour later, they would check in in the room and have a conversation with our staff member. This is another picture of the calendars. So acknowledgement for being on time. We filed the strategy of PBIS. Students were given an acknowledgement group ticket for that common goal. They were given that individual ticket when they arrived at the classroom with a note. We met with the students when we were in circle and one of the topics that we discussed was, as a group, what would you like to earn for your acknowledgement tickets? Initially, it was the pie in the face of the principal. And when they earned that goal, the principal was nice enough that all the kids were able to participate with that. They asked for a pizza party. That was another reward that they was important to them. And then lastly, one of the other rewards that they wanted was to make slime and have a slime party and um, get all the ingredients and, and be with each other to do that. The individual goal setting, we sat down with students and we looked at our matrix and we looked at the school-wide rewards and we problem solved with them for a certain amount of tickets. What would you like to earn? So not only did we did the group rewards with that in mind, but we also did goal setting with them in regards to individual rewards. Sherry, we have another really good question, and I think you're probably going to talk about this a little bit later, too. But Diane is asking, what feedback did you hear from students as how they got their home and parents to modify their behavior or to get them to get them to school on time? Right. That's a great question. And I will be talking about that in, in just a few slides here when we talk about our community circles. This is a picture of some of the rewards that we provided for students. We, there were students who um, did, who often were still not at school and we were not providing them with those stickers, but like I had shared with before, but we still wanted them to earn a reward for a percentage improvement. So we added that within our system and most often the rewards that students chose with books. Um, so we wound up getting a good supply of books for them. And that was a Friday reward. We also learned through trial and error that sometimes our DHHS worker was not in the building. Sometimes I wasn't in the building, so there was no one to check the students in. If we could, we, we told the students ahead of time, we put a note on the door that the check-in had changed and that they should go to the main office. We taught the secretaries in the main office the check-in procedure. And uh, so the students checked in with the secretaries instead of going to room 200. And that last bullet point there, if the secretary was unsure what the students were supposed to do, those students were able to tell her. So again, it was in that teaching process. And so if one of us were not there to complete that check-in during the morning, the secretary did that and took our place. And we learned that because one day neither one of us were there and the students came and stood in a line, um, but there was nobody to check them in. So again, 
trial and error. Oops, let me... Okay. So the next portion of our attendance intervention was the infusion of small groups and community circles. We found that the best number for community circles would be about six to eight students, sometimes less. We use the circle format using a talking piece. And this is where the, I want to answer the question that was asked, how did we how did we break down barriers? What did we do to help the families and support the students? During the circle format, we learned about the barriers that the students had encountered. And this, this was really significant in this process because this is where some of the real work started. We also infused um, visits by our, with our therapy dog. So we had arranged with the therapy dog's trainer to come to our community circle once a week, and that was a planned circle. And we also arranged with her to do a surprise visit during the week at check-in. The students loved this dog, and I'll show you a picture of him in a minute. Um, but it provided some excitement with this surprise visit with the dog during the week because we didn't tell the students what day the dog was coming. So you had to be there and be present in order to see the dog during the week. So we got to see our dog Panzer twice a week um, during, our, uh, during our circles and during another check-in. In determining groups for the circle format, it's best to place students together at their grade level or their age level. Um, some information tends to be shared that um, makes it so we need to make sure that students are developmentally placed. And the fewer numbers of students, the better. Um, <clears throat> I had six to eight before. You can also do four to six. It just depends on what your original number is and how many groups you are able to facilitate. The community circle format started with all of us sitting in a circle. And I would start by introducing the, the principles of the circle, which included um, that, that the information shared within the circle would be confidential, and that we would be asking the students to share when it was their turn to use the talking piece. We started with low risk questions and moved to high risk questions. And we offered for the students to return to us after the community circle if they felt they were unable to share during that time. Sharing in that format sometimes is a risk for students. Sometimes students are unsure about the confidentiality aspect of it. So I wanted to make sure that if students needed to talk after that we were open to that and that we were available. So low, quest, low risk questions would, would uh, include starting a group, what's your favorite color? What's your favorite food? Um, what's your favorite subject in class? Those are low risk questions. And then we move to higher risk questions. The questions we asked were, why are you most often late to school? What might you need from staff at school to help you get to school on time? How do you feel when you're absent? If you're absent, why are you absent? Um, and what can we do for you? So there were questions in this regard that really were able to help us understand what was going on with the students and, and with the families. During the circle format, lots of information was shared. We learned the most in this format. We learned that students did not have alarm clocks, didn't have a way to signal themselves to get up. If they did have an alarm clock, their brother or sister got to it and turned it off before they could get up. Um, we learned that transportation for some families was an issue that students couldn't get to school because they didn't live far enough to ride the bus, but parents weren't able to get up on time, and so they had no way to get to school. 
we learned that one of our families actually was a school of choice family and they lived more than a half hour away from school and on a daily basis they were late because they got a late start and so we were able to address that we learned from a student that uh, he had a close family member who was suffering uh, from cancer we did not know that and so that was important for us to know because we had a level of understanding about the worry that the student was encountering and that was one of the reasons why he wasn't able to make it to school there are other reasons for students um, absenteeism we had a student who talked about the fact that she wasn't able to make it to school on time during the winter because when she got home at night she would put her coat just randomly in the home and something happened to it during the nighttime until the next morning and she couldn't find her coat in the morning so she wasn't able to get to school on time so we problem solved with her and we talked about the fact that we would get her one of those coat hooks and asked her if she had somebody in her home who was tall enough to put that coat hook on the back of the door and she did she said i have a brother so he put that coat hook on the back of the door and she hung her coat on that hook and her attendance approved improved so we found that there were little things even that got in the way of our students performance and our students ability to get to school on time and that information most often came out during discussions during our community circle format. Our therapy dog visits, again, every time we had a circle planned and we had a surprise visit during the week. And this is our therapy dog. This is Panzer. And the students loved Panzer. Panzer had difficulty walking, so his trainer brought him in in a, in a cart, in a little wheeled cart there. And um, the kids loved him and really looked forward to, to seeing him. And he was a great addition to our, to our attendance intervention. We talked about the importance of monitoring. So we really kept up with the families in regards to the students' progress. If a student was tardy or absent, we called home, uh, talked to the parent. We know that your student was late again today. What can we do? How can we help you get them to school tomorrow? The parents felt really encouraged by this because they knew we would be calling. And we were looking at this through a problem solving lens. And we really saw improvements in, in the support of parents and problem solving with them. And of course, anytime progress was noted, we, we called home. We called home to praise the parents for helping their student get to school. And this was really eye-opening because we had parents who said, you know, I haven't had a call in a long time telling me that I've done a good job. And so we, we made notice that it was very important to make sure, again, that we monitored and called home if the student was tardy or absent, but also called home for those positive things. We found sometimes that provision of, of um, items were necessary for the home. One of the questions I had asked during a community circle was, if you had a million dollars, how would you spend your million dollars? And of course, many students talk about trips and cars and, and different things like that. Uh, I had a student who said that he would buy food for his family. So again, we learned during the time through our community circles, some of the needs that our students uh, had, and we tried to provide what we could when we were understanding of that and knew that that would help in their attendance at school. On a monthly basis, we sat down for a data review. In the middle of our planning and as we moved forward, we determined the exit criteria and we had uh, our monthly data collection of absences and tardies. We met monthly with the team, which included myself, the principal, and at that time, our DHHS worker. We learned a lot from our students, mainly that they did not want to move out of this intervention. They loved the attendance. They loved the support that they were being given. So we had to create a different way 
for that to happen. And as we move them out of the intervention, then they no longer met with us initially, but we asked the teacher to check them in as we had been doing um, at the other classroom, that the teacher would do the, uh, the happy dance and give the acknowledgement tickets and use the calendar within their classroom. So that student still had or was a part of that acknowledgement, but it was just in a different format and it was coming within, from within the classroom. Our first group data collection findings uh, was very interesting to us. It was, uh, again, we, we held the intervention from the end of January till, I want to say the middle of, of April. Um, over time, students who didn't make gains in attendance, we noticed that they were more aware that they were absent. They could tell us, yes, we were absent, and they were more motivated when they were at school. As time went on, Students were more, more forthcoming about their barriers and were able to share with us what those concerns were. And our students had uh, an increased knowledge of support. We taught them, who do you go to if you need support? Who at home do you go to if you need support? Who at school? So they were able to identify some of those things in regards to increased support and who could help them as they move forward. This is our first data collection. And just in summary, you see we had the seven students, um, two students made 100% increase, two students made 67% increase, and two students' attendance worsened. The reason why they worsened, they had extenuating circumstances for absences. Some had medical issues, students had deaths in the family and were at funerals. Um, some suffered some uh, homelessness. So two students, um, their attendance worsened, and then one student left the school. It was also interesting for one student prior to the end of January, a student, that student had 12 tardies per month. And by January, the student's tardies went down uh, significantly to three. So our first year, our end of the year program review, we determined the entrance and exit criteria for the next year. We formally placed our intervention on the tier two intervention grid, and we determined which students would start the year in the attendance group. We did, um, there were some students who we started right off in the beginning of the year. And that year also we had two schools who were, our schools were merging together. So we looked at the population of the student student body who was coming to our school and what their attendance looked like and um, if we should enter them into the intervention right away. So that's the end of my first portion here. Um, we're going to give you just a couple of minutes as we switch over here to just reflect, write yourself a note, um, take a quick break. Heather is going to now talk to you about where she has taken this program during hybrid, during the school closure, and her plans for the fall as she moves forward in supporting her schools with that tier two attendance intervention at Cleveland Elementary and at Woodrow Wilson. So I'll give you just, just a couple minutes here as we switch over. Okay, and hopefully Sherry and Melissa, you can hear me okay, so I know everyone else can hear me. Good, okay. So again, I'm Heather Burkholz. I am a teacher for Port Huron Area Schools, and I'm now for the past three years have been a behavior coach. Um, we're gonna talk in this portion of the presentation about sustainability and flexibility. So during the 2020-21 school year, um, we started out in a hybrid program. So we would have um, some students in group A and group B, but I was also new to both of those buildings as a behavior coach, but the great thing was is this attendance 
intervention was already in place. So we just took what we already have and just kept rolling with that. But we did have to do some adapting for the hybrid and then the switch to virtual. So again, we started out um, as a hybrid. So we had group A that would attend uh, Mondays and Wednesdays and group B that would attain, attend Tuesdays and Thursdays. And then on those days that they were at home, there were expectations for learning, for logging in and completing assignments. So when our tier two team initially sat down in October to look at our 15% October report, we noticed a substantial number of absences. And the tier two team determined that, you know, when we look at that um, triangle of PBIS and that tier one situation, we should have 80% of our kids responding to the expectations. And we didn't have 80% of our kids responding to the attendance expectations. So the tier one team took over. And of course they did a little digging deeper to get some data. And what we had discovered is that there was some confusion about the at-home learning expectations as well as what day students were supposed to attend. So the plan that was um, passed out to all teachers was to teach and reteach the learning expectations at home um, to make sure that we had a way of reminding parents and students of the days that their child was attending school. And then also we wanted to um, give students a reason for being there. We had to very purposefully um, greet our students at the door to build those connections. So we were greeting students, we were doing community building circles to um, give them a purpose for coming. Because again, as Sherry said, kids will show up for the adults that they like. And another thing that our tier one team did too is that we really wanted to acknowledge those kids that were working, you know, attending school on their days that they were supposed to be present, as well as attending their at-home learning environments on their computers. So we use our PBIS system. We had what we called anchor bucks at the STEAM Academy, and they had different amounts. You, know, you can see a five there, 20. We really upped that and started paying the kids, you know, 20 anchor bucks for coming to school or 20 anchor bucks if they completed all those at-home learning assignments. And this was a big motivator for kids because then they could go to the PBIS cart to do some shopping. So, you know, we decided that the tier two team would again, look at the attendance report in November. Well, when November rolled around, um, the decision was made to transition to fully virtually. And so when we looked at that, it was still a systems problem. We still had 80% of our students now not um, responding to those virtual learning expectations. So it was a systems problem and we kicked it back to the tier one team. And what the tier one team wanted to do is they wanted to um, acknowledge not only the students, but the parents that were really um, showing up virtually that were having their kids log on because we knew that they were essential. So we reached out to a lot of our community partners and they were able to give us many donations, gift certificates. We used some of our PBIS funds to purchase gift cards and every week. So students would have two Zoom sessions a day, at least two. And every time they logged into a Zoom session, their name went into a drawing. And at the end of the week, a name was pulled out and, you know, that student would get the award. And how that worked is the principal and I would deliver the cards. And um, just to show you some pictures. So initially, as a principal and I are on this Monday morning going out and delivering cards, you know, you're knocking on parents' doors and, you know, they see the behavior coach and the principal standing on their porch. Initially, they're like, oh, what did my kid do now? But when they'd open the door, we just really intentionally acknowledged them saying, thank you so much for being the at-home learning coach for your child, for having them log in to Zoom. We want to acknowledge you. Um, and we would just have a conversation with parents. We wanted to make sure that they had everything that they needed. What did they, you know, have access to food? Did their kid need any materials or supplies? Did they need access to get to our learning lab? Because we had bus passes if they needed Wi-Fi connections. And so this really opened up the door. And then we would acknowledge our students. And there are just some pictures up here of the kids that, you know, where they get that acknowledgement for attendance. And we did shout outs on social media. And these kids were just so excited, number one, to see us and to know that they were being rewarded for that. The little guy right up here in the right-hand corner was a first grader. 
and you know he had great virtual attendance. So as the principal and I, and he was at the Literacy Academy as we were walking up to his house, we could see him looking out the window. And he's looking at us, looking at us, and the principal is pointing to him and smiling as we're walking up and he's turning around like, me? You're here for me? We're like, yes, we're here for you. He just came running to the door, whipped open the door, was so excited. He didn't say a word. He was just jumping up and down. And, you know, his mom came and we acknowledged mom, we acknowledged him, we gave him this gift card. And, you know, when they closed the door, you could just hear him yelling and screaming for joy. And we could hear his mom, you know, high-fiving him. So again, it really built those connections with our families. And we knew that our families were the best communicators as well, too, that they were going to reach out and tell other families about this and encourage them. And again, these were all tier one strategies because we hadn't had a select group of students that we could pinpoint yet for attendance because they were so much. So this is just kind of that foundation of tier one before we initiated the program. All right, so we transitioned back to face-to-face -face in January. So the tier two, again, monthly, we would meet, we'd sit down and look at all our data. So when we looked at that attendance report, we now had a select group of kids. It was a student issue, so we could start to initiate that attendance intervention. And again, that attendance intervention was already in place. So it was just a matter of getting kids enrolled and training. Now, we didn't have the P2P coordinator in the building. She was still working from home, but that you don't necessarily need that person. You utilize who you have. You know, who do you have in your building that can do that? Teachers, librarians, itinerants, paraprofessionals, secretaries, use who you have. So how we decided to run this is that we had a fifth grade teacher, Stephanie Ford, that she would be the check-in mentor. So kids would be trained to go to her classroom in the morning. She'd stand outside her door. She had a big chart, piece of chart paper for the month out there. And it was the same process. Kids would check in with her. She'd say good morning. She'd give them a sticker. They'd put it on their chart. You know, they could look and see how they did. They could look and see how other kids did. Um, and then she'd give them a little green ticket that said, I checked in, that they would hand off to their teacher. So the teacher knew that they had been there that, that morning and then that would get traded in for anchor bucks. Um, and then my role in this was um, to train the teachers and to train students on that process. And again, it, it wasn't complicated. We just would talk with the students, kind of giving them the why behind it. I um, notify the parents, and then we'd let the teachers know what their expectations were for kids enrolled in this program. And then Gail, as our P2P coordinator, was um, contacting parents. So again, we knew we had the foundations of the inter um, attendance intervention program. So the procedures that we wanted to put in place is that we had to have a procedure for tardy students that probably looked a little different from the year prior, um, a, a procedure for absent students, and then a procedure when the facilitator or check-in person was absent. So for tardy students, um, when they would come into the office, um, they would just check in with the secretary. Secretaries knew which kids were the attendance group, and then they would just go directly to their class, and the secretary would call Mrs. Ford and say, Mrs. Ford, you know, so-and-so is here today, but they were tardy. And so then she would just put a T on the data chart. Um, for absent students, so once um, Stephanie had checked the students in in the morning, you know, kind of got her class in and settled, she would email um, Gail, who was a P2P coordinator by 9 a.m. And then she could reach out to the parents. Gail would reach out to the parents to see what barriers there were, where, why their child wasn't in school. Did they have to quarantine? Was um, were they not feeling good? You know, what was the problem? And then we also had to have a procedure for an absent facilitator because, as you know, um, many of us had to quarantine or we, you know, we had to be off for extended periods. So we had also trained the um, Stephanie's fifth grade teaching partner, Wendy Krieger, and she would check students in when Stephanie wasn't there. And so as you can see in the picture below, on the left-hand side here is Stephanie, and on the right-hand side was um, Wendy Krieger. And I do have a quick video I wanna show you of how easy this check-in process is. Um, the, the video or the audio on the uh, video is not that great because you know, we have all the kids in the hallway, so I might stop it every now and then, but the process worked when kids arrived in the school for the first bell between the first and second bell, 8.15 to 8.25, they went directly to Mrs. Ford's room and to check in. 
And now Mrs. Ford, the rest of her students knew the procedure. They were just putting their stuff in the locker. They were going into the room, eating their breakfast, getting their morning work started. So again, she had procedures for this. And so it was not a disruption in her schedule whatsoever. And again, you'll see her handing off the I checked in green ticket. So we'll take a look at this video. And again, I may pause it just to kind of let you know what she's saying. Roberto, yeah. 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 Hi. 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 And so one of the things that we had at our school, I don't know if you were able to hear it, but um, he did get Voyager of the Month for his attendance because, you know, he had really improved it. So he's picked his Voyager of the Month, gets a big shout out, sign goes in the yard, his picture is posted up at the school. So then you get the wind sticker. Oh, that's okay. Then we can get it. You can get it today, right? All right. Okay. And we have Mr. Jeremy. All right. Good morning. Where you go? Where's your ticket? Get in here today. See you tomorrow. Good job. I'm gonna go like this and just hand out tickets first, and then I'll get your names. Christiana, and you're all set. Thank you for being here today. Hopefully, you worked on the other day. And then we have Miss Lexi. No. Lauren. All right, you're all set. Get your little bee there, Lauren. Uh oh, hold on. I can get you a different one. You're welcome. Nice to be here. Jordan, Mr. McCoy. Oh, I'm so glad you're here today. All right. Do you have a nice oh, okay. 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 So you can see the process does not take long. It is that greeting in the morning, um, you know, maybe acknowledging the students and, you know, she reminded that one student, hey, I hope you got all your work done, you know, just keeping track of that. And then the kids are putting that sticker on their chart and heading right to class. Um, the kid in the end that kind of waved, um, this was a game changer for him and his attendance. He had had substantial numbers of absences. And when we dug a little deeper, we really found out that he didn't feel that school connectedness. So putting him in this intervention group helped him because suddenly he was getting this adult attention, you know. He was getting greeted by Mrs. Ford in the morning and he really built a strong relationship with her. And, and he was a third grader and, you know, teachers knew the kids that were in the intervention group, the attendance intervention. So as he's walking down the ha hallway, all the teachers are like, Christian, we're so glad you're here today. It's great to see you, bud. I mean, they're high-fiving him. And this was, as his teacher explained um, to me, it was a game changer for him academically and behaviorally. He just had such a better attitude coming into school. And for him to even wave at me like that, it was a big deal. So we, what we discovered too was a lot of this was about the adult attention. It wasn't necessarily about the big prizes. It was about the attention from the adults. And then also, so that was the STEAM Academy and that was third through fifth grade. Here we have the Literacy Academy, which is kindergarten through second grade. And the process was very similar. They had um, their calendars here. So there was a binder with a calendar for each um, child in it, but they checked in the office with the secretaries. The secretaries ran this program. They were the coordinators and the facilitators. So if a kid from the attendance group was absent, the secretaries would call the parent to find out what barriers there were, why the child was absent. And they were also the ones greeting them in the morning. Same procedure, the kids got a little I checked in ticket that they take back to their teachers. You know, teachers do the happy dance and then they exchange that for a gold ticket. But we'll look at a couple quick videos from the Literacy Academy because even your young kids 
can do this as well. And you can problem solve with the younger students as well in Circle. So this is just a video of a student that had, again, he was a first grader, had a lot of absences during the hybrid, numerous absences. And then we went to virtual, he kind of disappeared off the map. So once we were able to get a hold of that family, get them back in face to face, um, we were able to contact that parent and kind of explain what this program was. And working with him and working with her, what we had discovered is, you know, she was working midnights and, you know, she was coming home, she was falling back asleep, you know, she wasn't able to get up, you know, she was a hardworking mom. And so we were able to problem solve with her about a neighbor that lived next door that walked her kids to school because, again, they were um, not far enough for the bus, but they were first graders, so they couldn't really walk alone. So this neighbor would stop and pick up the boys every morning and walk them to school with her kids. And we also problem solved with the kids because they would give mom a bit of a hard time in the morning. So we problem solved with them about having a good attitude about where they're going to put their backpack, their shoes, um, what they need to get ready for the day. But you'll see a big improvement in his calendar. Great. You're right. So what do you notice about your attendance right now? What do you, what do you notice? That I got four days in a row on both lines. Yes, four days in a row. Look how much of an improvement. Remember when we were going back in March, we had a bunch of days missing. So look at compared to March. Now look at What do you think about that? Good. Yes. Awesome. Okay. Thanks so much, buddy. We'll see you later. Yep. And he was so excited. This was the purpose for him to come to school. He was just excited to be able to put that sticker in his book, to be able to get acknowledged from his teacher and get all the detention. She would make such a big deal out of it. The secretaries, when he checked in with them, would make a big deal about, oh my gosh, we're so glad to see you today. It's just not the same when you're not here. And so that was a big improvement when you looked at March and that last week in March was spring break. But when you looked at his attendance in March compared to April after we problem solved, big improvement with um, his attendance. And this is just a quick video over at the Literacy Academy. Again, they're, they're K through second grade of a couple kids checking in in the office. And, and the office can be a busy place in the morning, but the kids knew the procedure. They would go right to the office, whether they were getting dropped off or getting off the bus. They'd make a line. They'd put their sticker in the book. You know, secretaries would greet them, and um, they'd get the I checked in ticket. <laughs> Awesome, great job, Brooke. Thanks for being on time today. Right there. And it was um, nice to see the kids helping each other check in. She was a um, kindergartner, he was a second grader, and he was helping her to check in. So even your little kids, the lower elementary, can do this intervention. And I think most importantly is to hear the feedback from a classroom teacher. You know, she's going to talk about a student that was enrolled in this program and the differences that she saw with that. Because again, this intervention, um, I think, is easy to implement, but it's all about collecting that data and that continuous circle of improvement. What do we need to do to make it better if it's not working? How can we be flexible? How do we build sustainability? So she's going to talk about from the teacher's perspective what she noticed. All right, so this is Jennifer Leetzout. She is a first grade teacher at the Literacy Academy at Cleveland, and she's going to share with us a little bit about some students that were enrolled in her attendance group or our attendance group. So hi, Jennifer. Thanks for being here. Hi, thanks for inviting me. Okay. So the first question is, is what did you notice about the student attendance once they were enrolled in the attendance group? How did things change? Um, once the students were enrolled in the attendance group, they were more excited to come to school. It was like just a flip of a switch, like I need to get that green ticket, 
turn it in and then they were really good if they forgot or came in late to go to the office and get that little green slip so they can get their gold ticket so i definitely saw a big turnaround with all the kids and just they're more excited to be at school i think some of them really struggled with that transition of getting up in the morning but they're like have that motivation now to get them going mm -hmm. so do you think it strengthened that school and home connection yes definitely for sure and then the next question, how did that, how did them, when they were in the group and they started coming to school regularly, how did that impact them academically and behaviorally? So I noticed with the students that were in the attendance group, their behaviors stopped. Like we have very little issues. Um, and then also their, you know, assignments coming in, the kids that had missing assignments, which is why they were put in the attendance group um, for some of them, they started doing them and turning them in. They, wanted that praise and those gold tickets for getting their work done and staying in the attendance group. So we, I saw change in those kids for sure. That is awesome. And do you yeah. think it was easy to, like when we think of our school, how easy was that for the kids just to come in and hand you a ticket? Because I know a lot of teachers have questions, oh, that seems like a lot of work, but did you think it was a lot of work? No, not at all. It was really easy. The, so the kids would come into school and stop in the office, and then there's a binder in there with their name, and the kids get to put a sticker on it, which we're in elementary school. Kids love stickers. So anything with a sticker on it, they are so in. So they got to put their sticker on their name, and then they would get a little green slip that said I checked in, and they would bring it down to me. And then in my classroom, because the morning is pretty crazy, I just had them put it on my desk, and I knew if they checked in or not based on if how many tickets I had on my desk and who was in the room where they would be like, Miss Lito, I forgot to go check in. I'm like, Oh, I didn't see it yet. Go check in. And then they would go back and check in in the office and come back. And then once I started putting in the attendance and I would give them their gold ticket. So I had to wait a few minutes to get that instant praise, but I did at least acknowledge them and the kids love it. I feel like some of the kids that got phased out of it, they're kind of like, where's my gold ticket for being here so that was kind of hard for them for a little bit but the kids of it now love it i haven't had any issues the parents are very supportive with it because i know a lot of the kids will go home and say oh i just got a gold ticket and they'll be like well what'd you get a gold ticket for and they'll tell them oh because i came to school today and that's really helped some of these kids that i haven't seen a lot all year so i'm super happy to have the attendance group program because it's definitely made a big difference in these kids lives very awesome. Well, thank you so much for sharing with us. We appreciate it. Yes, thank you. So I, I'm kind of looking at our time here, and I think, um, correct me if I'm wrong, do we wrap up at 1140? Do we have a couple extra, extra minutes? She said maybe I can talk about the circles for upper or lower elementary, or maybe a little bit about our data. Yeah, so we technically end at 1140. If you would do me the favor and um, hop to the end and put the sketch code up in case yes. anyone needs to leave, they have that. Then if anyone wants to stick around and hear the rest, um, they're welcome. I for sure am going to stick around because you know me, I love this. <laughs> yep, so there's your sketch code. I'll leave that up for um, a minute so you can collect that. Thank you for being flexible. I appreciate it. I think one of my favorite things so far in the, in the presentation really was just that how uh, hearing from the teacher just now about how the students who have graduated from that program still want to come back to it. That that's how impactful that connection is. Yes, and you know the one thing that the kids knew that were phased out, they always knew they could go back in, it. like they could go and say hi to their check-in person. Um, they always knew, like the kids that were phased out at the Literacy Academy, knew they could always stop in the office and say hi to our secretaries. Um, and teachers still acknowledged and made a big deal, like, oh, I'm so glad you're here today. So that was really nice too. But again, the kids, it's all about that adult connection. All right, so just talking a little bit about um, the circle. So my role on this too was number one, to train teachers and students, but also um, we were doing bi-weekly um, attendance group meetings. And these were community building circles, like Sherry talked about, we'd go from low risk questions to high risk. So at the STEAM Academy, you know, we'd have third through fourth grade. At Literacy Academy, it was kinder through um, second grade. And really, even with these small kids, you can problem solve because one of the boys, he was um, a second grader and he had a couple sisters like in kindergarten and first. Their main issue was the same thing. They would get home, 
they'd lose track of their backpack or their shoes. So problem solving with them, we were able to get them a basket. We taught them how, you know, every time they got home from school, they're going to put their backpack in their basket, take out their folder for homework, put it back in, got them a little mat for their shoes. And again, things as simple as that were game changers for these kids. And they were able to get to school on time. And it was the same with the older kids, problem solving with them, you know, maybe setting that alarm on their phone, setting the alarm clock and um, just looking for any other barriers. Because the most important thing, you know, we wanted parents to feel was that it was not a punishment, but we were there to support them and help them to remove barriers. So then what our tier, team to, tier, tier, tier two team would do is every four weeks when we meet, we would look at the data and we'd have to determine if we were gonna maintain, fade or alter. So based on the criteria, we knew if that student's attendance had been at 80% or above for four weeks, we were going to phase them out, like it was a two week phase out process. If they were 79 to 60%, we knew we had to maintain, but possibly dig a little bit deeper to find out what were some of the other barriers. And then if they were 59% below, um, you know, we would have a team meeting and it might mean moving forward with the district's truancy policy. And so for collecting data, because again, that was the most important thing. We had to collect data, not only on our students, but how well the system, that intervention was performing. So, you know, we would take the data from either that um, chart that we had at the STEAM Academy or the calendars, and we'd either have the secretaries and Stephanie, they would compile it into an Excel sheet, which was really easy. So, you know, students' names are on the left-hand side and their start dates if they started a little differently a few days behind some other kids. And we would, an X meant they were present, AB was absent, um, an AB with a Q or Q means they had to quarantine, and an AB with an EX was that it was an excused absent. So the student at the top, you can see he had a substantial number of absences, but when we look down, once we got him set in this, his attendance greatly improved. And so that was looking at individual students. The team would look at that. And then the next thing we always had to look at, and this comes right off the MTSS website, was our data tracking tool. How well is this intervention working? And so as a tier two team would sit down, we'd look at this and say, okay, this intervention, in order for it to be successful, you know, it has to be at 80%. We should be seeing, you know, 80% of our students successful in this program. So when we would sit down and look at it, the Literacy Academy, you know, we looked in February, we only had 75% of our students being successful. So we went back to do that fidelity checklist. Were the teachers forgetting to give them the gold ticket or greet them at the door? Did they need to get a couple more gold tickets instead of that one? Were there still some barriers at home that we need to talk about? So, you know, we'd go back in March. Are we at the 80%? Yes. Why do we think they were that way? And the team would talk about that. So anytime we were below that 80% mark, we would go back and do a fidelity checklist. And that can be done by the principal. That can be done by um, a teacher. Whoever you have available in the building can take a, that can take a few minutes to dig deeper to say, why are we not hitting that goal of 80%? So then after we look at the data and the students that we um, knew we were going to phase out, we had to celebrate. So they kind of had a two week phase out period where we talked about what was going to be happening, how they were going to be phasing out, that they could still say hi to Mrs. Ford or go see the secretaries in the morning, but they would have to put the sticker on. Their teacher was still going to greet them. They could come stop and see me anytime. And how we celebrated this was, again, our community partners had um, made some donations for us. But really, and I wanna, it's not always about the donations. What we discovered in this intervention was it was more about the adult attention. The kids didn't really care so much about the prizes. They liked the attention and the connections that they had. But we would celebrate with a gift card. Um, Panda Express donated like a kid's meal and we'd give them a graduation certificate. They'd get their picture posted on social media and out in the hallways. And again, the most important thing that students that were phased out were still acknowledged by that teacher. Their classroom teacher was still making a big deal. Teachers that they passed by in the hallway were still saying, hey, I'm so glad to see you today. 
And here's a couple more pictures. Um, on the left-hand side is a fifth grader who was phased out her attendance and greatly approved. And this was um, a first grade student. And so prizes may have been a little different, like upper kids we noticed, maybe they wanted some games and different things for lower elementary. They liked the coloring book and crayons. But again, it's not necessarily about the prizes. It's about the adult attention. And a couple more kids at the STEAM Academy that had gotten the awards for phasing out. And so at the end of the year, when the tier two team sat down and we kind of wanted to say, what did we learn this year um, from this hybrid to virtual to face-to-face? -to -face? What did we learn about our interventions this year? And so our reflections were that you know, we had to be flexible with this intervention and that we had to use um, the staff that we had available in the building. And that's what I would encourage all of you to do. Who's ever available to check those kids in in the morning, use them, you know, social workers, counselors, you know, administration, secretaries, paraprofessionals, whoever you have available to check them in. And then even running those um, circles, you know, you can have a teacher on their prep take 15, 20 minutes to run a circle. The principal can run that circle, social worker, um, a paraprofessional, you know, having somebody train them to run those circles. And that the data was crucial for making our decisions. If initially in October, if we would not have looked at that report, our system would have been flooded with attendance issues because we didn't have 80% of kids responding. And then to be prepared to adjust that intervention, it's not working. When we would look at um, our systems and if it wasn't meeting that 80% criteria, you know, we had to go back and say, what do we need to change to help these students be here to school on time? And then always have a backup plan when your facilitator is absent. You know, but initially when we got this going, Mrs. Ford was there checking kids in and then suddenly she couldn't be there. So luckily, you know, we had our teaching cohort who said, I can do it, took five minutes to train her and she got it. So, but always have those backup plans. Um, and then again, you know, looking forward to next year, being flexible with whatever next year brings, but me, having some of those kids that we had enrolled at the end of the year that didn't graduate out, they're gonna be our kids that we're gonna pick up right away in September. Um, but we would like to thank you for being um, part of this presentation and joining us here, taking your time out this summer to come and join us. We really appreciate it. And you, if you have questions, um, please let us know how can, um, what questions can we answer for you? Hey, um, Heather, there is one in the, oh, she sure, just got it. How long was yep. it? <laughs> Perfect. Should have known. Well, yes. again, I want to echo um, Heather and Sherry's thanks for, for you all who joined us and were able to stay here a little longer. I know it's a lot of great information and I want to, I want to thank you, uh, Heather and Sherry, for sharing your expertise and experience. Um, we're really excited. Oh, we, our conference has a a little bit of a break now so people can do stretch and get some lunch. Uh, the informational booths are open from now until 12.05. And then our general session um, and uh, closing address will be with Dr. Nicole Holland Sims. So we really encourage you to make sure you go back to that general session at 12.15. Thank you, everybody. Oh, thank you. Thank you. It's a great job, guys. Thank you. Really well done. And it was thank nice you. to see the combination of the voices and students and the and it's staff. That was really, really, really well done. Thank you. We always keep working. I know. Well, I'm, uh, I'm it's excited fun. to hear what you're going to be working on this coming year so that next year during our, our conference, we can <laughs> see you well, again. It's been, it's been fun for us to see how this has evolved yes. from the yeah. very beginning to where it is now and how over time, um, you know, the the uh, intervention seems to strengthen and uh, the progress is, is great. It was great to hear the teachers feedback. So, yeah. 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 So fun for the kids. And as they enjoy, and again, you know, I encourage anyone, even the lower elementary kids can do this. I mean, it's, yeah. it's easy to do. Yeah. It would be, it would be interesting to see if, if there's a interest in pulling it up um, even higher into like the high school. I know you guys do a lot of yes. collaboration across the district, yeah. so really well done. Mm -hmm. I, I hate Great. to hate to congratulate you and run, but I have to hop off and head over to the main stage. All right. Well, thank Good you luck. so much, Melissa. Thanks. Thank Goodbye. you. Bye -bye. Thank you. All right. Bye. Bye. Bye.
All right. Well, Sherry, I think it's time. I think um, we can log off. I don't know if I don't think yeah. anyone else has any other questions. I think we're all set. Thanks. Okay. Yep. Thanks, Sherry. <laughs> I'll see you later. <laughs>